Hi guys, so this unit is called Motivation, Emotions, and Stress. Um, we also have another component called Personality in this unit, um, but this particular video will only go over the theories of motivation um, and what motivates behavior. So for, for this particular section, by the end of the video, you should be able to explain um, behaviors and how those behaviors are motivated through the different theories and and behaviors are complicated and so some are not well explained through all theories um, for example some some behaviors are instinctual um, and so it makes more sense coming from that perspective whereas other behaviors might be motivated um, in a progression of needs and so that makes more sense through the humanistic approach and so by the end of this you should be able to just explain behaviors and um, through the different theories of motivation. So the first one is a biological approach to um, motivation and so this is called the drive reduction theory. The drive reduction theory is just essentially that there is um, some kind of need, so you can see the progression here, so you need something biologically. So we're going to focus on like a, a, a need that your body has. And so because your body has that need, you start to become uncomfortable. So um, if I am, am, am in need of food, um, I start to become un uncomfortable. My stomach starts to have like hunger pains. Um, or, you know, I might have to have, con I might start having contractions in my stomach and this just feeling, this gargling, and it becomes uncomfortable. And so that's what's called a drive, this discomfort. Um, same thing with thirst. Whenever you become um, very thirsty or very parched, you start to become uncomfortable and your body wants to reduce that discomfort. And so the discomfort is called a drive. And so you are moved to reduce that discomfort. Um, and, and that is what motivates that behavior. And so you eat or drink to remove that uncomfortable feeling that you have, that biological feeling. And this is linked with homeostasis. And that just means um, the biological balance you have in your body. And so um, that drive inside makes you uncomfortable and you want to get back to that balanced state. And so you want to get back to that comfortable state and so you eat or you drink to get back to that comfortable state. Um, the next theory is the arousal theory and the arousal theory is just basically sometimes you do behaviors because you get some kind of stimulation from that behavior. Um, maybe you get some type of sensation, um, even like a little thrill and so you are, are doing that behavior for that little bit of thrill or sensation. Um, it's uh, like a sensation seeking behavior. Um, and this has several components, um, optimal arousal and the yerkes dodson law. So the optimal, optimal arousal part of this is that you will seek, um, you will seek enough of a thrill um, that you get that sensation, but you're only motivated um, to the optimal point. And so after a certain point, you don't feel motivated anymore because maybe it's causing you, um, you know, too too, you know, it's not, it's too much, too much sensation or too much stress. Um, and so, or you're not, you know, you have very little sensation, so you want to keep doing more, or you have too much, and so you keep doing less. And so for some people, their optimal arousal um, is a, a roller coaster. And so you want to ride that roller coaster for that thrill, but maybe bungee jumping is too much arousal. And so the optimal arousal is you're motivated to get a, a, an optimal amount of sensation or thrill. So the yerkes dodson law has a little bit to do with performance in that, so you add this performance piece to it. So um, as far as how much um, arousal or sensation we need to perform a certain task, um, a little bit of, of this tension and uh, aroused state is good, um, but there's a point where too much sensation makes us not very good at that performing that task. And so um, kind of like if you think of um, playing in a basketball game or any kind of athletic event, um, a l I I'm thinking of, you know, going up to the free throw line and you're feeling a little bit nervous and a little bit of nerves is good. It might kind of keep you focused and keep you into the game, but too much might make you shake and, um, and, and you know, make you miss the free throw because you're, you're shaking and you have too much stress. And so the yerkes dodson law is like there's an optimal amount of tension inside that helps you perform and too much helps you or hurts your performance. 
So Maslow's, Maslow's hierarchy of needs comes from Abraham Maslow, and he is a humanistic psychologist. And so he would say we are motivated to do certain behaviors in an order. And so if you follow this pyramid, he would say that um, the very first thing that you're motivated to do in any situation is meet your most basic need. And so at the bottom, our most basic need is, is for survival, to eat, to drink, um, to sleep. And so if we don't have those basic needs met, then that is all we can focus on is meeting those basic needs first. And so our behaviors are going to be um, seeking those most basic needs first. And so if if I am well fed and I have slept and I have I have water I and I my basic needs are met and then I am more motivated to go to the next step into the next step and so you can see as you work your way up from safety still very basic need um, and then into the psychological needs like feeling loved and, and belongingness again if you think if you aren't eating and you don't have food and you don't have water you might not even really be worried about um, like going to a party or going um, out with your friends because you haven't even slept and you can't even focus on the day because you haven't slept or ate and so or eaten and so um, he would say you work your way up this pyramid and you feel like you can do these different things once your most basic needs are met and so at the very top is self-actualization and this is um, a behavior where you're seeking your full potential um, you're being creative and you're um, you're producing things and you are um, trying to make the most out of out of yourself like mentally and physically and um, uh, creatively and, and, and you're really not going to be um, motivated to do that unless you feel safe and, and you have all of these basic needs met first and so that's his premise is that you meet your most basic needs first um, you can also be motivated by intrinsic and extrinsic uh, factors. So I, I will, I'll start with intrinsic. An intrinsic uh, incentive or motivation would be something that you would do just because you like that behavior. So whatever the behavior is, you just do the behavior because you like that behavior or you just perform that task or that activity because you enjoy it um, just for its own sake. So you, there's nothing else other than you just um, purely enjoy whatever that task is. Um, an extrinsic motivation or an extrinsic incentive would be something outside of the behavior itself. So, um, so whether that is transactional, like you are um, getting money or you are getting um, praise or grades or, but it's something out, you're doing the behavior for something outside of the behavior. Um, and typically we think of it in like rewards, I get some kind of reward or award. Um, it could also be to avoid some kind of punishment, but you are doing the behavior um, for something outside of the behavior itself. Okay, um, that's it. I've got theories of emotion coming up next. So um, there is one more piece of motivation and it has to do with why people are motivated to eat. Um, and, and hunger, and so there are some terms like set point, which is this body's weight thermostat, and that you're motivated to eat when you fall below um, that set point, your body's like this weight average that you kind of revolve around, and there are other motivations behind hunger that can be um, social settings, um, also hunger pangs, like not eating, um, can, can, can motivate you to eat um, your your glucose your um, glucose level your blood sugar can if your blood sugar level falls it can motivate you to eat um, uh, your hypothalamus in your brain is responsible for the um, the feeling of hunger um, and so there are all kinds of things that can motivate you to eat and so there are some some terms in there like set point um, basal metabolic rate um, yeah hypothalamus um, and, and glucose, I think, are some of those terms that are related to hunger and why you are motivated to eat. And so that's the last piece for motivation.